Having a safe and affordable home is essential for all Americans to thrive. For decades, low-income families have struggled to access affordable rental homes. However, this issue has now become a significant problem for the middle class as well. Millions of middle-income earners are unable to afford rent in major U.S. cities due to the steep rise in prices since the pandemic. Without significant pay increases or government assistance, these middle-class households are being excluded from the typical middle-class neighborhoods. This exclusion triggers a chain reaction that leads to systemic poverty and lingering inequality. In other words, housing costs are suffocating the middle class. We have compiled several statistics and facts that demonstrate this trend. However, before we move on, we kindly request that you support our work and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos. The American dream used to entail getting married, settling down, purchasing a home, and growing old. However, in today's world, this concept looks vastly different. Buying a home is no longer an affordable option for everyone. Multiple financial burdens have emerged for everyday Americans, such as increased debt, soaring housing costs, and rampant inflation. These factors have contributed to the decline in home ownership and the shift towards renting. Currently, almost 43 million families live in rented apartments in America, which is the highest level in history. The surge in the number of middle-class renters has been staggering. In the past five years, the number of households making from 56,000 to 100,000 a year that decided to rent increased by 82%, according to a recent report from the Joint Center for Housing Studies of Harvard University. At the same time, rental vacancy rates are lower than they've been since 1985, and once renters do find housing, they have to pay the price. The typical home now costs about $80,000 more than it did just two years ago, and the average rent in the U.S. is over $1,000 more expensive than it was in 2020. Rents are now climbing an average of 3.5% annually, while middle-class renters' incomes have declined 9% over the past decade. In an interview with ABC, salesman Robert Gary from Columbus, Ohio, said he always lived a comfortable middle-class life until the pandemic changed everything. Now Gary is seeing his pay rise fail in comparison to the rise in cost of living. I'm living paycheck to paycheck and barely making it, he said. I get a raise, they raise the prices to take my raise away. According to Gary, in December, his landlord informed him that his rent would increase from $1,710 a month to $1,950 a month starting January 2023. A $240 increase in a month was just insane stress, Gary said. No one cares anymore. Companies are out there taking as much as they can get. When asked if he could afford it, the renter lamented, no, not with the price of everything else right now. I mean, that's half my income. The only things he could find cheaper than this were in neighborhoods that he wouldn't feel safe in. The pace at which Gary was forced out of his middle-class lifestyle was extremely shocking to him. It is unlike anything I have seen in my 60 years in America, he emphasized, adding that he now has to move out and stay with a friend until he can find a place he can afford. Unfortunately, similar situations are increasingly common for middle-income renters. In fact, the managing director of the Joint Center of Housing Studies, JCHS, Chris Herbert, argues that in 2023, rental housing in America is a tale of two markets. While higher income renters are finding a healthier supply of housing choices, too many families earning less than $100,000 per year are having to make trade-offs between putting a roof over their heads and food on the table. In most metropolitan areas across the country, the American middle class has been spending far more on housing than they can afford, researchers found. A study highlights that 21.2% of middle-class homeowners and 46.3% of middle-class renters in the United States are either moderately or severely burdened by housing costs, defined as spending more than 30% or more than 50% of their income on housing, respectively. The property price boom of the past few years has pushed 70% of homes out of reach of first home buyers on middle incomes, especially now at the highest interest rates in over a decade. Those able to buy are having to save for an extra year to have a 20% deposit, the data revealed. Meanwhile, rents are consuming progressively larger shares of income. In Boston, for example, the median rent hit $2,680 in February, up 24% from three years ago. A household would need to earn at least $117,000 annually to afford this, based on the standard definition of affordability, in which one should pay no more than 30% of income for housing. Consider that in Boston, an elementary school teacher makes approximately $68,000 a year and a registered nurse $73,000, and you get the picture that the middle class is getting squeezed. 
Median rents in Los Angeles are currently at $3,000, while in Washington, they are $2,600 per month. The demand for rental housing is high due to an exploding population of millennials burdened with student loans and low-paying jobs, baby boomer retirees downsizing to apartments, former homeowners exiting foreclosure, and millions of Ward B homeowners who cannot access mortgages in the tight credit market. Everyone wants the same type of location, which includes cities, transit-friendly suburbs, and town centers that are walkable and close to jobs. However, the pace of new residential construction has been insufficient to make up for years of virtual standstill. In many cities, demand is so high that there are enough high-income renters to support prices that are out of reach for the middle class, lower-wage employees, and seniors. This supply and demand imbalance is expected to keep rents high for the foreseeable future. We are currently in a rental affordability crisis. 15 years ago, more than two-thirds of people who rented an apartment or a single-family home in the U.S. earned less than $30,000 a year. However, beginning in 2010, the share of middle-class renters surged as the country started to heal from the 2008 housing bust. This shift came as the economy drove up home prices to new record highs, straining family budgets across the country. Rents, too, have been rising since the Great Recession, and in coastal and hot cities like Denver and Austin, these increases have put even rentals out of reach for most of the middle class. In 2022, the capital required to sign a lease on an average price $3,500 per month apartment in San Francisco often exceeds $12,000 due to requirements for first and last month's rent, security deposits, and a broker fee. In contrast, since 2010, there has been a significant increase in home building that could make up for the time when it virtually stopped all over the nation. We didn't build anything in the recession that's still biting us today, said Andre Bueno, the founder of Los Angeles-based real estate investment firm Bueno Group. If you are in the missing middle, you are incredibly out of luck. The missing middle represents those who aren't rich enough to navigate the current housing market without getting burned and at the same time aren't poor enough to qualify for government assistance on housing. It's no wonder that U.S. cities are increasingly home to high rollers who can pay high rents or down payments and lower income people who qualify for subsidized housing, while middle income earners are being priced out of middle income neighborhoods. Every passing year makes it harder for middle class renters who cannot qualify for subsidized housing to find affordable apartments on the market. Renters need to earn $21.21 per hour to afford a modest two-bedroom apartment in the U.S. According to the National Low Income Housing Council, significantly more than the average national hourly wage of $16.38. This is why 51% of renters in the middle class are unable to afford a place to live in most U.S. cities. The past few years have seen the disappearance of the savings that were once associated with the middle class, as wage growth has stagnated. This not only makes it difficult for people to remain in the middle class, but also makes it impossible to come up with the high sums required to rent or buy city apartments. According to Michael Dickerson, a housing expert at the University of Texas, the affordable housing crisis is not just for the very poor, but also for those with good jobs who are not poor enough to qualify for subsidized housing and not rich enough to pay the rising housing prices. For instance, a family making $100,000 a year cannot afford to buy a house in most U.S. cities. Analysis at the University of Texas estimate that to comfortably raise a middle-class family, one needs to make around $300,000 a year. Due to rising cost of gasoline, food, housing, travel, tuition, and healthcare, the middle-class lifestyle is becoming increasingly difficult to achieve. Even though it is statistically possible to raise a family with less income, it won't be easy if one's goal is to save for retirement, save for their child's education, own a home, and retire at a reasonable age. Managing everyday expenses has become increasingly challenging for many Americans, especially those with lower incomes. Spending too much on rent can have far-reaching implications that go beyond the end of the month's stress. According to a study by Apartment List, households across the U.S. spend 41% less on food and 71% less on health care due to the cost burden of housing. Already, approximately 51 million households do not earn enough to afford a monthly budget that includes housing, food, child care, health care, transportation, and a cell phone. The majority of people are struggling with housing, according to Fannie Mae Maori Family Research head Kim Betancourt, who notes that there is not enough affordable housing for the people who need it. This creates a chain reaction where a middle-class person occupies an apartment that a lower-income person might have occupied, and so on. 
If there are not enough cheaper options, it leads to systemic poverty and an increasingly unequal America where only those at the very top of the economic chain can own their own homes and build equity through properties while the middle class is hollowed out. This is not just a housing and rental crisis, but a reflection of the crumbling foundations of a broken society, and nothing that our leaders are doing is making things any better. The financial meltdown that we are witnessing today is a reminder that more distress is coming for everyday Americans.